What's up, my people? It's your host, Al Ray of The Al Ray Show. Today, I have a special guest. His name is Joe Ellett, coming from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, Joe and myself met at Weber International University many years ago. We went to school together for two years. So tune in for our conversation today. The man himself is here, Joe Ellett. How you doing, Joe? Everybody clap my head, Kyle. Oh, what's up, man? What's up, Al? What's good? I'm great, man. Never complain. How are you? Man, I'm just uh blessed, highly favorite. That's what my mom used to always say. So I just copied her, man. Always, you know, man. Ask me that. All praises to the most high. Yes, sir. So, Joe, it, it's been a, a long time. Um, I'm kind of copying you. People don't know that. Um, with with the whole social media or just media content, period. Um, as I said in the intro, Joe and myself, we go back to our days at Weber International. Um, from, from the first time we met, we, we kind of just hit it off. Um, and we, we kept in contact and yeah. Joe is down in Miami right now. Correct. I'm in Miami, man. I'm on Biscayne. Down on, down on Biscayne. Right so now, Joe, man, um, you have a media outlet. It's called Highly Unique South Florida. Explain to the people what it is. So Holly Unique South Florida is like a brand underneath a big, bigger brand. So what we have, um, when I started this, we started, uh, I started with my co-founder, which is also um, my, my lady, you know what I mean, my lady, my other half, and she likes radio. So we started a radio station in Atlanta and down here online. It's called Holly Unique Radio in Atlanta, down here Holly Unique South Florida. And then we uh, morphed it and we grew it into a media outlet. Um, where we do a uh, magazine, we do content, digital content, like the Howry Show, hopefully. And um, we add him to the docket, you know, um, podcasts and all different stuff. But the goal for the media, uh, the media company is just to give exposure to like different people who don't get it, you know, because all these bigger outlets down here, and especially in South Florida and Atlanta and in, in anywhere in Florida or Georgia or anywhere in LA, the bigger people, it's always like a, a political move. It's always a circle. So everyone's not in that circle. There's more successful people like yourself, like I, who don't get the exposure you needed. So once I got into the circle, my goal was to open the door for everybody else. So that's what this is. This is a feeder system. And at the same time, giving other people portfolios to get out of college. You know, those for media, young people like myself, when I got out of college, I didn't have all the, the portfolios like everybody else. So I want to help other college people, other people gain a portfolio so that won't be an excuse anymore to hire young black professionals. I like it. I like the sound of it, giving back to the community. I think that's our, the greatest gift that we can give, uh, whether it's with our children, whether it's with your media outlet. And what I like to do is give back with, with my interviews as well. So I think that's the greatest gift that we can get, as I already said. So with Highly Unique, um, the couple of platforms you have are the radio show and you have a magazine. Um, the magazine, first issue, so... Yeah. Over eight thousand down. Right, right now we're at nine thousand dollars for that first issue because uh, we had Sabrina Fulton on the cover or one of the covers. So my my thing with that, I do two covers. We started a magazine. My dream was always uh, write for Essence. It's a weird dream. I don't know why uh, people laugh at me when I say it. Mm -hmm. Write for Essence. You a black dude, not a black woman. I'm like, you know, I always wanted to be, you know, I'm always wanted to be the different maker, the outlier. I applied for dots one day a long time ago. I got denied, but I applied for dots just to see if they did it as a black man. But so I had I had two covers, um, and I featured. I do two covers, kind of like 2K. So you get it's 2K. You it draws different crowds. So if I put somebody here for community, and I always do entertainment because I want to show that uh, as millennials, I'm millennial. We I call ourselves millennial professionals. So like I can go corporate by day and at night I can put my hat back and play Kodak. I'm from Broward, so I play Kodak Black when I drive. I play Kodak Black, like what you just left to me is nothing changed. I'm the same person. So with our covers, I want to have two covers. I do community person, I do entertainment person to cover both uh, aspects. We had Sabrina Fulton on the cover and she's running for office down here. She just lost. She only lost by 300 votes. Right, um, she she ran for commissioner for Miami Dade, and I feel like um, she thanked me yesterday. We played a big part in helping her, um, in helping her get that far, you know, being the cover. So I think people downloaded that to hear her story, to hear her exclusive. So it was pretty cool, man. I'm proud 
of my team, probably myself. It's cool. And how many, how long have you guys been putting out this, this magazine? How many issues do you have right now? So right now, we only have, we just started. So right now, we started, when we first started this company, it was like a year, two years ago. We started building the radio up, the radio brand up. Um, we got radio station in Atlanta. Y'all download the app, How Unique Radio, HUR SoFlow. Um, and then we started with digital content and building just our team. Um, Cause you can't do it. I always tell people like, if you look at the magazine and all the stuff I do, I said at the end, uh, it takes more than one tree to build a forest, mm -hmm. right? So I couldn't do everything by myself. And I was trying so hard to do, right? Cause I was trying to prove myself. I was trying to prove to everybody I can do everything on my own. Like I didn't need anybody. Like you guys, I don't need you. Right, I can do my own. But then I realized I got to build a team, like I said. So I was going through team members, like I'm saying. I did some shows. I had a countdown show down here. There's a show, a TV station down here called Video Mix, where they show a lot of videos, uh, like music videos. So I had a countdown show. I was trying to pitch that to remote, whatever. And then I realized, like, you know, I want to get back to my roots. It was like writing and, and telling people stories. So we created a magazine. And our first issue was – um. Uh, we were bi-monthly magazine, so our first issue came out last month or June. And since June, our, we first launched it. We had not right now we had nine thousand and like seven hundred downloads or six hundred downloads, and we just released our second issue for the magazine last week, man. So it was really cool. It's popping right now. I can't tell you the downloads now because I'm scared to look, but <laughs> <laughs> it's lit, man. It's really cool. Congratulations on that, man. That's that's what I'm thinking. Um, especially starting out. I'm sure that I can keep you keep you motivated. Um, so you did mention um, having you know that that background of, of journalism. Um, yeah. Where did that passion start from? Um, well, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I used to always I played basketball. Obviously, that's how I know how I played basketball. But on the side, I always was fascinated by like 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 weird stuff. When I say weird stuff, as a kid, it's weird. Like books, I read like. 30 books a week as a kid, right? On some weird stuff. I used to read in high school. I used to sneak to Barnes and Noble. Like, I don't want my friends to know I'm at Barnes and Noble because they'll just joke on me, right? They'll clown me, clown me out, right? And I used to take these books. I used to read all the time. So when I started reading, I just started writing poetry, stuff like that. People used to laugh at me for poetry. <laughs> <laughs> poetry, <laughs> all that stuff. I used to write. I used to write so much, but just like, not not really like journalism, but just like fiction. And then I started writing like motivational stuff as I got older, as I see life, as I start seeing different views of life, I start writing. And then the passion came about telling other people's stories. So it was really cool. That's like, that's, I'm not 30 yet, I'm close, but that's like 25 years of just coat and bait and just like mm -hmm. a passion secretly on the side. Mm -hmm. So it's lit, man. That's where I got to write from. And y'all see Joe pointed at me when, when he said um, people laughing at him for doing poetry. So wow. when we were at, at Weber, he used to write poetry and they would have poetry nights and Joe would, would go up on stage. I would sneak out too, man. I ain't tell him nothing, man. Well, I have to walk out all black. I come all black. I look around. I'm like, all right, they sleep. And there they go. I'm like, dang, somebody told him. And Joe, like, I don't even know if that was his first night or second night, whatever it was, but word got to us that, that Joe was doing poetry, <laughs> doing spoken word, and we went to, went to go see him. And I think that night, like, what happened? Like, I know something happened. There's the reason why we, we were making fun of you. I don't know. I think I think I said I did two poems, I believe. I don't know which night it was, because that was, like, my fourth night. When mm -hmm. I saw y'all, I was like, oh, I can't even do this poem. This is a love poem. Casey like like froze up like when he said. Yeah, that. I switched. So what I did was now nah, nobody know. I switched the whole poem up. <laughs> to this day, I remember that I switched the whole poem up. I like I can't say what I'm about to say. Funny them. They gonna think I'm weak. I gotta be strong. So I froze to try to uh I try to think of another poem in mid poem. Real difficult to do. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I, that day I was embarrassed, man. But it worked. It worked later on that night. But, but you know what I mean? That's another story. And and even though that we were making fun of you and laughing at you, you still didn't let that that stop you. So I think that's that's a great thing. You continued to write, kept doing your thing, and kept being yourself, kept being Joe. Um, I think that's a a reason why you and myself get along so well because we yeah, exactly. are ourselves. Like we don't really play into what's going on outside of us. What we feel like doing, we'll do it. And um, it's pretty much paid off for us so far. 
Thanks. So, <clears throat> Weber just said it. You did your um your spoken word. You do your poems. Do your poetry. You were a former student athlete. Um, how far back does that go? Did you play like multiple sports growing up? Did you only stick to basketball? What was what was your dream before well, becoming uh, in, into this whole media market? Well, my dream was um, obviously to be like Kobe. Uh, RP to him. That was my dream. I saw Kobe. I wanted to be like Kobe. But I wanted to play basketball. And it started because of my dad. My dad's like 6'9", 6'9". He played basketball overseas. He played for Vanessa State. Um, he tried out for the Heat. I think he played for the Heat for like a 10-day contract at least like four times. They kept calling him. And then um, he came home. The story is, this is the story they tell me. But the story is like, uh, you know, he was overseas and then my mom went to move to Georgia to stay with her family. My dad just he didn't want me to grow up without no father like that because he didn't have a father, so he came back over. So since then, he just instilled in me sports. I played I play basketball, man, just most of the time. I played football as well, like during like middle school and high school, but most of the time, just basketball every day. And those same, um, those same principles from basketball I take, I use that for life. Like I, now, like just playing all these years, now uh, – I use for life still to this day. I use I use basketball as an example for writing. You know what I mean? Just working hard, work ethic. Every night I use an excuse. I told uh, we have an intern. I told her one time she said I can't write a page right now. Like I have block. I said listen, it took me one night to learn how to shoot uh, deep. I went one day, <laughs> one practice, and the next day I was shooting deep ever since. Like it's the same. So just to get a consistent shot, it's just one. It's just it's just the work ethic. Um, you put in with basketball, and I think basketball. Like, I, I think I'm thankful for basketball because I met a lot of people uh, during basketball. It taught me a lot. I met I met you. I met so many people that to this day, if I say if I didn't play, um, then you know I didn't waste my time. I feel like time was it was great. It was a great uh, run for me, and I, I loved it, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, and going off of that point. Like basketball or sports period ends for everybody at some point. And the most important thing are like the memories we created um, or just the experiences and all that stuff that can help you towards your professional life, whatever that may be uh, for that person. So um, I would say I kind of have a, a similar, you know, background as you when it comes to sports. My, my dad was a professional basketball player. He did play basketball, but um I know my, my family were big in the sports and kind of pushed me towards that. And I'm grateful for that because a lot, probably the majority of my friends are through sports. Um, like all of you at from Weber um, that I met are, are through sports. And I don't regret that at all going to Weber. Like I wouldn't know Joe right now. I wouldn't be doing this interview with Joe. Exactly. So, you know, like it, it, it's an honor um, what sports provides us, um, the lessons that it, it teaches us and taught us. Um, so that's why. I, I love being a coach and like giving back. Um, that's the biggest part is like building those relationships. Yeah. So speaking of building relationships, Joe, um, we talked about before we got on, on camera is how you've been able to, to build relationships through the years, um, through the, through your time as a, as a, I'll say a, a media mogul. There you go. We will, we will speak it into existence, but speak into existence. So you, you spent time with Revolt, as you talked about. Um, spent time with Revolt, now you have your own company. Um, how have you built and how do you, like what advice do you have for building those relationships? Um, first, first, the real quick, to go back to the last one, real fast. Like, like what, also basketball, it teaches just sports. It teaches you something, it teaches you how to move on from sports um, simultaneously, but we never pick it up. Um, and, and, and then I'm gonna pick, like, show you guys how, how uh, it manifests through my media. So like, I kept trying to pound the door. Like we, as athletes, we always try to pound the door of basketball, football, football. That's the only way we can get out, is, is, is these sports. That's what I love. You love it, but at a certain point, you see it as a way out, yep. right? And I find myself keep trying to pound this door, transferring to schools, doing this, like getting hurt, but I'm still trying to bang this door. But it's closing for a reason, right? It's closing for a reason. Um, but those same, like it's like it's like uh, I'm a point guard. I'm trying to drive to the basket, right? And the defender, it's a, it's a double team. But knowing me, right? And now probably know me. 
I still still try to shoot. <laughs> I was still trying to shoot. And I'll miss and I'll look over like it's not my fault. Like, yo, you brought your man over, right? I already brought your man over, right? But it's usually it's my fault. I tried to I tried to push the issue. So what happened with, with sports after that, I saw a, a, another door open. And we gotta be conscious enough to know when that door opens. So when I saw that door open again, like for me to leave and start this media thing, I took advantage of it. So um, with that, I went back to another school, Florida Moore University. And one day I sat there, I, I, I'll tell you the story. This is literally it. I sat there, it was at HBCU, and everyone was at parties. And one night I was walking on campus and I looked around, I said, no one is doing nothing right now. I could be doing something. Mm -hmm. And with that, um, I started writing in different journals and different uh, publications down in Miami, Sun Sentinel, Miami Times, and stuff like that. And then um, I joined an organization for writing for journalism. And that took me to meet people uh, at a conference in, in DC called NAPJ Conference. Um, it's National Association of Black Journalists. And I met so many people there that started me off. I met uh, people from Revolt. I met people from ESPN. Um, and those cultivating um, relationships, you just have to be genuine. Like Al said, like, I'm always myself. Al is always himself. And that's why we always click. Like, people can talk, but I'm always myself. It, it hasn't changed, right? I'm still the same. Al is still the same. He's Al Ray. He's still the same, right? I'm the same person. So when I meet these people, we remember in media, it's a, it's a lot of, for Shea, it's a lot of curtains up, a lot of fakeness. So when they see somebody that's really genuine, they tend to gravitate to that person. So me just coming into the room and everyone trying to pitch something or this, and I'm not pitching, I'm just asking for advice. I met, I never get, I met Michael Wilbon, uh, a journalist for ESPN. Uh, he does PTI. Um, people who watch sports know, people know Michael Wilbon. And I met him and everyone was trying to pitch them a story, which I get on the show. I was like, listen, like, how, like, I just need advice, man. How do you, like, navigate through life, like, with these dreams and stuff like that? Like, as a writer, people tell him, you know, and he was telling me, he said, come here, I want to talk to Joe. He knew my name and everything, but it was on my tag. I had a tag on. But in my hair, <laughs> and out of my hair, I was like, he knew my name, right? I was like, see, man, he knew my name. So I go over, and then he told me, um, he like, listen, man, just keep pushing, keep pushing through it. Um, he said, keep writing. He said, I used to be just like you. So I see myself in you. And once I, he said that, man, it's it's done deal. And I, I realized that worked. So I I use that for all the people I encounter, all the events. I just be genuine. When I meet people, I don't really ask for anything. Like I don't push like my my agenda on people. I just ask for advice. How you get here? And that's how you build relationships. People will start being your mentors and people start mentoring you or introducing you to someone else, putting you in the right corner. And that's how I kind of Got to where I'm at today, uh, working for Revolt for two years, um, meeting the lady there. Her name was Ashley. I meet her in the event. She didn't have a job. So when she got the job, she called me, right? It's just like those are, it's those stuff like that. Meeting people for ESPN and then taking me to NASCAR. NASCAR's not ESPN, but you know, I'm the only black, I was like the only one, only black people at NASCAR, NASCAR diversity. So it was really cool just to meet people. Just got to be genuine and, and kind of cultivate through that. And then you'll go with it. Awesome words, my friend. <clears throat> so oh, long words. I, I'm sorry, I went long, right? <laughs> no, I longer. All right, I could have went longer. Content, man. man. Content. Uh, like I said, I like to bring some value to the people at each yeah. and every episode, and you just brought a, a ton of value with that. Um, letting them know how you operate and how you build those relationships. I think um, uh, the very important thing that people need to know is that it pays off to be a good person. Exactly. People think they can be, you know, like an a-hole and, you know, treat people any kind of way and think the universe will reciprocate that, that energy of wanting everything they want. It's not going to happen. Um, the, the, the way the universe works, the way God works is you're a good person. You put good energy out. You'll receive that, that, that same good energy. Um, and, I, and I see that with Joe. Um, you know, it's just not since it's not talk, like I, I follow it through, through Instagram. I'm on the, the website. I've downloaded the, um, I haven't downloaded the magazine yet, but I've downloaded yeah. the, You got to download the magazine, y'all. I got That's to. Cool. There we I, go. I, but, um, I, uh, I've downloaded the, the radio app that you have. Um, I've had that for probably like two years. And the, the main. You the first. You one of the first. Yeah. The, the main reason why, why I downloaded that because, 
for one, I'm a, I'm a music lover. I love music. And like, I don't want to listen to the, the regular radio station that we, we have on the radio. And then I end up playing the same songs over and over. And during my time at Weber, I kind of heard a lot of that South Florida um, dance music. So yes, I, yes, sir. I, I hear that on there. I hear all types of music. So that's why I, I support, for one, I know Joe, so I'm going to support somebody that I know um, that I trust. And then for two, I love the music. So I, I, I downloaded that app, um, but I, I definitely will get that that magazine. I know the, the prices vary between like 3 to $5. Yeah. Some change, you know, not much. All right. Um, Y'all go to McDonald's and spend more when you could have spent less at McDonald's. Yep. And reading is fundamental. So I'd rather spend that three to five dollars on on a on a magazine that I can read, I can gain some information, um, I can support for a friend of mine, as opposed to going to, to some restaurant, spending that same three to five, and it'd be gone in, in two seconds because I didn't eat it all. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I most definitely support you, man. So you, you, you're in the media, former student athlete. Um, you're headed, you're headed for great things. Um, this week, uh, or this past week, when this, when this come out, this past week is Mamba Week in remembrance of Kobe. Um, you and Kobe have a special connection. Uh, share with the people what that, that connection is with Kobe. So... So just like Kobe Bryant, like means a lot to me because growing up, that's that's who I wanted to be. That's who I wanted to be. But not just basketball wise, like his movements, the way he talked, the way he walked, what he believed in. I listen to a message every morning still from Kobe Bryant saying, "Follow your dreams. I'm not there with you, but keep pushing, keep following your dreams." And it's crazy because he died. So now when he says that, it like it, it it pushed me harder. Even um, this week, uh, it had a commercial come out. It says like, "Be better." Like, that's what Kobe always made me be better. If I was doing bad, I will look at a game with Kobe, i will come back next day, like, arrogant. i will be like, I don't know what I did. I didn't do anything, but I just feel better. Like, I'm arrogant now. Like, I'm confident now in myself. And just like uh, my birthday, 22nd, uh, on my birthday, I'll never forget. One day on my birthday, I came home one day, and I didn't get any gifts. And back in the day, they just take you for your birthday to Chili's. I don't know if people still do that. But in the black families, they take you to Chili's, Applebee's, right? <laughs> I talk to some people now, they're like, Chili's, Applebee's. I'm like, that's, that's what he used to take us back in the day. That's what I got to. <laughs> that was a high end for me. That was high end. I live in Miami now. I know that's the lowest of ends now that I live in Miami. And doing media, that's the lowest of ends. But to me, that was high end at the time. Show you, like, my humbleness, dude. So I said, I can't lift the Chili's. I didn't really get no gift. The Chili's was the gift, right? Chili's was the gift. But I came home and it said on the TV, Kobe had 81 points on January 22nd. So every year now I get a gift. If I don't get a gift every year, I know Kobe is the anniversary. Kobe scored 81 points January 22nd, 2000, 2006, 2004, 2006. Six. Um, six. It could be six. I could be on point. That means I was right the first time. Never second guess yourself, everyone. <laughs> Never second guess yourself. But 2006. But yeah, man. So every. Man, Kobe's the greatest man all time. That's just from my opinion, all time. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that, but yeah, I know y'all. I'll, I'll let, I'll let Joe have his moment. But I'm on the same thing, Joe. Uh, when I was like a little kid, obviously when I got older, I gravitated towards LeBron. But from probably from the time Jordan retired, because he, we only saw like a little bit of him. We saw a little bit of MJ. We saw a tad. Yeah, we were probably like five or six when he grad well not graduated, but retired. So we didn't see much. So Kobe, I was like watching him as a little kid. He's like 17, 18 years old coming to the league. Um, so it was a cool thing to me. I was just getting into basketball. I was probably six or seven years old at the time. So it, it meant a lot. My uh my grandma was friends with like a distant aunt of his. So it was like oh, man, you did. You didn't tell me that information a long time ago. I, I, I forget about it sometimes. So um that, that was really cool, like, knowing that stuff growing up. So I was just like, Kobe, 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 um, yeah. all the way. Um, I recently – I just threw the poster away because it's all messed up. But I had a rookie um, Kobe poster um, where he's holding, like, the moon or whatever, like he's out of space. Yeah. So I always had, like, a um, – I was very fond of Kobe. And then, like I said, once LeBron came to the league, I, I kind of, like, pushed Kobe to the side and, and I and I started riding with, with LeBron. But um, that, that Mamba mentality – 
Um, that's something I try to instill in, in the players that I coach. Uh, and I talk about a lot about coaching because that's what I do. Um, yeah. I can make this like a sports type of interview, but that's, that's what I do. So I'm going to relay that message. I coach. And, I and, coach and around me. coaching in, in sports specifically, just coaching period. Yeah. So um, through, through sports, I try to relay that message in, in a former player of mine. This is before Kobe died. This is like the season before. So this is last season, um, like 2018, 19. And I remember like maybe when the player's in the funk or when when I know it's time for him to turn up, I'll, I'll say in his ear, like Mamba mode, Mamba mentality. I'll just say that. And then he'll, he'll just take it to another level. And he was a big fan of Kobe too. And so like Kobe, as you can see, was an inspiration for both of us. Um, I'm sure he was an inspiration for, for everyone out there. Um, so... Hopefully you guys enjoyed Mamba Week, everything that um, ESPN has been showing, um, that Nike has been showing, and, and all the messages that, that different athletes have been sending out. So rest in peace to, to, to Kobe Bryant. Um, Kobe Cole, man. He's, he's definitely missed, um, even though I never got to meet him. So I really, it really doesn't feel like he's gone or anything to me because I never, he was on the other side of the country. So, but um, I know it's a lot of people who miss him. Um, he, was, he was an inspiration too. So, uh that, that's that's for Kobe. So that's for Kobe. this interview for Kobe. We dedicate this interview to Kobe. Oh, oh, oh dude. Listen, oh. I, I see him in person. Um, he was playing the Heat. Uh huh. I seen him in person, right? Now this man, Kobe, man. When I say he started, he was missing shots, and I was disappointed because I was the only Laker jersey in the stands. So I'm getting yelled at. Everybody, you suck, Laker. We losing. Ooh. Right? Boo! They're like boo. I stood up. He didn't see me, but I feel like he heard me. I was like, come on, Kobe. Kobe went off. <laughs> Kobe went for like 20 points straight, and I feel like he did it for me. So now I, I say this, but people laugh, but that's how much Kobe meant. So now like I say, like, uh, like I got this thing called uh, Legacy 40 on the 40, so I'll, in the floor. So I'm one of the top 40 uh, media professionals under 40 in Florida. And I was like, they were like, who you dedicate this to? Who you – um, give your success to. I was like, Kobe. And they, they didn't think what made sense. They didn't think it made sense. They're like, how? Like, you don't know him. But I was like, Kobe is the reason why I'm here today, man. So I just dedicated the, the Kobe this episode. Yeah, man. That's, that was a, a lot of inspiration. Um, have you copped that that book? I know it's like a big old, it's almost like a picture book almost. I, I forgot. Of the course. Name. Of course. I would go get it. I would go get it. But it's so heavy, man. So much success. <laughs> So much skill, so much pictures in it. But yeah, I have it, man. I have it. I wish I can get a sign, but I, I have it, man. I have it um in my living room right now, like kind of like almost cased up. Like I'm trying to get a case for it mm -hmm. and put like a jersey on top of, of, the, of the side of it. I also got like a, when I went to Fort Memorial, my number, I couldn't get 22. Mm -hmm. um, my coach retired his own number, right? Let's <laughs> figure that out. You know how coaches do. You'll probably do the same. But so what I did was his high school, Kobe high school jersey was 33. So I got 33 for Kobe. Now, this is the first time that uh, my mom is hearing this because she wore 33 in high school. She thought I did it for her. Um, <laughs> so I agree. But everyone, y'all know I did this for Kobe. So I got, I'm got i going to frame that too and put that on top of the, of the thing, man. So it's going to be lit. My living room will be lit. I'll show you guys the next episode. Uh, you know, he'll show y'all a picture. Yeah, I got I to gotta make a trip again down there. Um, yeah, I'm, on, I'm I'm living good over here, man. Y'all come through, man. Miami is where it's at. 305. 305. So, speaking, just, let's stay on um, the topic of NBA. Who do you have um, in the finals coming out the West and the East? Well, well, since, you know, I got the Lakers. I'm a Lakers fan, right? Unfortunately, LeBron's on the Lakers now, but I'll take it. We'll take it, right? Um, and not only just, like, uh, LeBron sometimes, because I like LeBron. That's how I kind of do it. I, I'm a Kobe LeBron, but now, nah, you know, he got to keep the legacy going. So I got Lakers heat. Now, it sounds like I'm being biased. I'm in 305. I'm in Miami. He picking the heat. But no, nah, like, I, I don't like – I picked the Bucks, but after seeing them for a little bit, like, uh, the heat, I like, got more uh, – Jimmy Butler's a little driven. They got more shooters, right? So the Bucks cannot guard shooters. They can't guard Orlando. I didn't even have to. I don't know anybody on Orlando, but Markel Folk. Mm -hmm. and that you know, if we, I know him, and mm -hmm. he's not scoring at all. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting, I'm choosing the Heat because their defense. I feel like they'll put that wall up on Giannis. Middleton to score his little twenty, 
Um, and nobody else will probably get buckets. But the Heat got so much scoring outside, I feel like the Heat will go to the championship. They'll beat the Celtics. Too. I think I think the Heat are they're they're a sleeper. Somebody I'm sleeping on definitely. Um, my choice is Lakers. I'm I'm going to Lakers. Um, at the beginning of the year, I said the Lakers, but I was like the Clippers. I don't know. They're kind of deep. But after watching them through these first what three games, I think it is, four games <laughs> with the Mavs, I'm kind of questioning it. So I'm I chose the Mavs. Al. Really. Before this started, you know what? The Clippers is the you said the the keyword the keyword for the Clippers is the Clippers. It's the Clippers, <laughs> the Clippers. Like, I don't care who's on there. The Clippers, yeah. Clippers are never gonna win. Plus, they was taking Luca for uh uh they was you know it was taking him lightly. And then I Paul George pandemic P pandemic P I knew who's gonna do this. Not playoff P <laughs> playoff pandemic Paul George I knew. <laughs> I, I feel like now everyone who passed Paul George should put on a mask, right? Because he just – the virus is spreading with him. <laughs> he got to put on the mask. He's horrible in the playoffs. And I don't like Paul George because he didn't go to the Lakers. So yeah. I took that little person. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely, man. Um, I, yeah, I, the Clippers. The Clippers, they, they, they're a very deep team, very good team. But Luka, Luka is the truth. Um, I'm starting to become a believer of him. Before I was like, ah. Uh, he put up numbers. That's cool. But after watching um, the other day when he hit that buzzer beater over over the Clippers, um, he he made me a believer. Uh, he's pushing me all the way over to become a believer. So shout out to Luca. Um, but we had we had from the East, the East. So I got the Lakers, and then the East. I think Toronto. They don't have as much firepower as you yeah. know Celtics, as the Bucks, as the Heat. Um, but I just think. Nick Nurse is a is a really good coach. He won coach of the year again. Um, they defend well, and everyone knows their role. So that's who I'm going with. Um, I haven't really watched every game. I really only watched the Clippers series, and I watched the Lakers series. Um, I haven't watched really any of the East, so I may be way off. But from just my intuition, I say uh, the Lakers and the, the Raptors. You're a great coach, huh? Because that's what that's what that's what Toronto do. They know their role. Yep. Right. And that's like a lot of people don't like don't like to hear that sometimes. Like if everyone play their role, everyone would be like the team would be successful. That's just in life, dog. Just everybody do their role. Mm -hmm. so it's cool. That's that's a big issue. But yeah, man, Toronto, I got Toronto after the heat. But I don't got that. I like I, I feel like Toronto has a great defense and I like uh they work hard, man. They great they coach. They coach well. They, you know what I mean, like you, you a great coach, so you know great coaching. Yeah. See, me, I can't coach because I'm going to tell everybody to shoot. <laughs> shoot or shoot. Shoot or shoot. I'm like, man, let's shoot it now. <laughs> uh, oh, you're a shooter. You said you learned it from, from your dad. You, you mentioned your mentioned your dad. Um, you have three siblings. Obviously, you have a mom as well. Um, talk about, expound on, on your family life. What was like that growing up in South Florida? So growing up in South Florida, uh, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the Dells, what we call it, we threw L's up. You know what I mean? The Dells, what we do at Broward. So I, I was born in Fort Lauderdale, grew up there, moved to Pompano for a little bit, shot to Pompano, um, Kodak, and all that, all them boys right there. It's just like the area is totally different from Miami, so I can't explain it, and we're only 30 minutes away. But Broward, Broward kind of have like everyone is together in Broward. Everyone's together. Everyone's like a family, right? Although you probably date some girls, so that's no here in there. But everyone's <laughs> everyone's family, bro. So just growing up, my family, um, like my dad is like a a, a big alpha male. But he always teach and he always uh, instilled in us like different ways. Uh, he's like a legend in there. Like his nickname is Boom in, in Broward. I don't know where he get it from still to this day, right? So I grew up as Little Boom. I don't know if that's a drug dealer name. I don't know what that is. <laughs> don't incriminate me. All right? So we cool. So everybody call me a little boom. So just growing up with my sisters, we all play basketball. We all did sports. So our time is kind of just like always together every day. Uh, my brother played basketball. I got to be at his game. Then my sister played. I got to be at her game. Then I play. Then we all lead. Then we talk about each other's game. Then we go practice that same night. And then we come back the next day. My sister practice, my brother practice, my practice. We all like you do that all day. Now my dad's kind of playing still a little bit. Now we had his little games, his red games, all right. So, so our whole life kind of revolves around sports. But now, like 
I call them every day. Like my brother, like was just calling me. Like they do the little three way FaceTime. I talk to them every day for like an hour every day, right? Just on some laughing, goofy stuff. Now, but now I know that um, just growing up there and growing up, my dad and instilling us different stuff and in, in family because without family, you won't have anybody. You like if everyone left today, who would you have? And sometimes, like, you forget that sometimes as you grow up with friends, right? You think you can have your friends forever, right? And, but now, as you know, friends come and go unless you're a genuine person. Like, ah, like, you my friend because he's genuine. Like you said, it's, it's a kid. But most friends are like that. They don't know themselves yet. They don't know who they are. So as they switch, they loyalty switch. But your family is going to always be there. My dad's always say that. So now as we older, man, I talk to them every day, man. And I, I thank God that we live in our little one bedroom shack uh all the time and then we moved to another one bedroom shack we grew up we grew up pretty tough but it taught us man it taught us so much now so if i have kids i'm like listen man you straight you live on this game you good <laughs> <laughs> you good i ain't having kids by the way well, i'm not not right now i don't have no kids because i'll say something earlier i want people to die i got kids i don't got no kids <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch what I'm saying, huh? <laughs> oh, nobody calling me. <laughs> so, before we head out, Joe, I want you to to shout out um, highly unique software. I want you to shout out. Let everyone know where they can find your your platform at. Listen, I want everyone right now. Uh, I want you to look into the camera. I want you to really look. I don't know if I was gonna put it down here, but he's gonna caption it. He's gonna do whatever it takes. So what you do is download our radio app. We have a radio app. We play all music, hip hop, play South Florida music. We, if you prefer Atlanta music, Migos and stuff, you download the Atlanta app. Well, this is one app, but we got different stations, right? So you download the app, it's called HUR SoFlow. Go to Apple, Google Play, HUR SoFlow, right? You download that app. Then after that, you're gonna go to our website. It's highly unique, SoFlow.com. Why is the name highly unique? Because we are highly unique individuals, right? Everything we do is highly unique, not just unique. That's a little basic, right? So go to the website. I want you to go to the magazine page. You download the magazine, right? You're going to see some great stories in there about some great individuals, great entrepreneurs like Al, great coaches like Al, uh, great people like Al. You're going to see amazing people like that. So it's, it's great. If you want to be inside the magazine, you can just email me, man. It's easy. Um, if you want to be, if you got artists, if you're an artist, you want to be on the station, you want to do a profile for anything, you just email us, email us a new wave. You, you know what I mean? Email us like texting me right now. I email so much. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And also please follow us on Instagram, how unique so flow on Instagram. Um, and listen to all our shows, just follow us, man. And keep updated. You can follow me on Instagram if you want. You don't have to at jlife underscore 24. You know why the 24 is there. JLife underscore 24. That's it, man. And that's all we rocking with today on the Al Ray Show, man. We also going to try to get Al on there, too. So y'all y'all look on TV. Y'all going to see Al, man. I'm proud of this, man. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. So um, I want to say thank you for coming on to the show. Um, As I said, it, it's been a process trying to get you on here. Um, But just know I, I didn't forget about you. But we we got you on here. Um, I think I think this is a great interview. You agree? Yeah, of course, of course. I want to shout out to everybody from wherever that I didn't that I didn't keep in contact with. Man, I still love y'all, man. Y'all y'all big time in my just development in life. I changed a lot because of those days. Uh huh. So shout out to Highly Unique South Florida. Go ahead and download that that radio app. Go to the website. Download the magazine. Read some pretty great um, articles. Shout out to Joe Ellick or Joseph Ellick Jr. Yes, sir. To be exact. Um, whenever you're in Miami, you can hit him up. I will be making a trip whenever all this all this stuff clears up. I, I will be, it will be lit. I'll definitely be down. So I'd like to say again, thank you, my friend. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, bro. Love you, man. My people. Until next time, I'll see you. I'm just trying to set the record straight If this a fight then I'm a heavyweight Super light, I'm in the darkest place Suit inside me in a coffin cane Criticize me if I'm gone